another component, the whole manufacturing side, is how you pay for it. Um, we were, this, this was right in the midst of us focusing on it more and, and fully understanding what it meant to be running this business as a business. So luckily, there are these things called friends and family you can go to and, and say, hey, remember a while ago you said if, if Sean all started taking off and if you needed some help, let us know. And that's exactly what we did. We went to friends and family, um, select people that had expressed interest in helping us out in the past and said, hey, now's the time. We want to have success manufactured. We're at max capacity, which we can do ourselves, and, and this is the next logical step. So if you can help us out, that would be awesome. So we did it right, you know, we, we, we took on personal loans from these people and we had the promissory notes and the whole bit because we, um, more so than in any other kind of debt, you know, it's a friends and family, you don't want to mess with that, you know, and we, we aggressively paid off those debts and, and everything was cool because we got then four varieties of our characters in inventory that our distributor could sell for us and everybody's happy. So things were looking up, you know, we were, we've been developing our fan base, we, now have manufactured goods, we're getting into more stores, and there's this, at this time, this possibility of this video game. Um, we were hopeful. We also got some great press. We uh, were featured in the front page of the Sunday New York Times uh, a couple years back um, in the technology section of how we used um, the web and so it is some of these trend spotting our sites to our advantage. Um, we were featured in Spin Magazine thanks to our friend Luke Fiasco, who uh, you can barely see it, there's a little wee ninja right there. <laughs> I didn't Photoshop that. Um, and then we were featuring the Chicago Sun Times right around the holidays of uh, 2007. I should know that, but I can't remember. So we were in a party mood, you know, so everything was looking up. Uh, we, 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 uh, you know, let's splurge, let's get ourselves some, some goodies and have, have a nice party. <coughs> Um, but, but then 2009 happened, and you know we, I don't need to tell you how that all played out. Um, when you're making stuff that relies uh, predominantly on disposable income, and nobody has disposable income anymore, things, things kind of sour. But we did have something really cool happen at the same time. This was in November of 2008, when the video game hit. So, we had a lot of eyes on us, and a lot of traffic to our website, but the wholesale revenue, because stores are closing or downsizing or just really not buying stuff. So we had to kind of get scrappy and figure out what was next. So with the help of a local organization called Chicago Community Ventures, um, we applied for a grant um, that was a matching grant. And we were able to get that grant and help redesign our website. Um, we knew what we wanted. We knew that. Um, we wanted to keep people that are coming to our site uh, because of Ninja Town. We wanted them to introduce them to the world of Sean Holmes in a way that really hadn't existed before. So we did that. We had this great character archive. We looked at how we could um, reinvent our, our e-commerce portion of our website. First, uh, with Big Cartel, which if you don't know about it, it's for startups, small business, and casting solution, not the end-all be-all, but really affordable and highly customizable. Uh, more recently, though, we switched to Shopify and gave us some additional features that we really wanted and liked, and it's been a serious win for us because our shop page looks exactly like the rest of our site, functions the way it should function, people can check out the way it used to, um, like any other site, and for what you're getting, it's a very affordable solution and allows for credit card purchases and so on. Without getting overly technical, the point being is that we need to, to take a step back and focus on Sean Holmes as a brand and bring people to our site, get them excited about our world and our characters, and if we captured them, if we captured their imagination, then maybe, just maybe, it was going to help on the website too, which would help with some sort of some of the revenue flows. So, in a sense, we got back to our roots. I mean, obviously, we were really kind of ramping up the technological side and, and, and getting everything going website, um, but that is when that decision was made, okay, well, we got some manufactured goods, we got some stuff going on, maybe we can start investigating some handmade stuff again. This also allowed us to think about licensing in a much different way. Like I said before, the licensing is, is really, um, in some respects, very little risk. I mean, we're not putting up the money up to make these 
products happen. We're really not doing much except what we normally do with design. And I'll show you some examples that really illustrate that. So I should caveat here, we didn't, we're not working with Apple directly or Nintendo DS directly, but we are making stuff that's going to exist in those platforms. So for Apple, we have an iPhone game coming out next week. With Kid Robot, we've worked on a Dunny. We also have some secret stuff going on with them that I can't really divulge. Um, and obviously, we do have the Nintendo DS game. South Peak was the publisher of that. How many people are familiar with uh, Rotobuji here? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. They're, they're a great place. You should check them out. They're at Chicago Game and the Design and Toy Store. They carry our stuff, but they also carry a lot of other really cool stuff as well. So we work with them. Uh, MailChimp is a great newsletter um, software. It's a web app. They do a brilliant job with what they do, and it's very fun to work with. And of course, another Chicago-based company, Double Two Publishing, who's uh, a comic book publisher. We work with on a couple different products. So what this allows us to do is just focus on the creative, the design side, provide them assets, um, work with them to make the products really, really cool. Um, and guess what they want to do? They want to sell a bunch of them, so they're going to, you know, do a ton of PR and marketing. Uh, for their, but it's essentially their product, but is essentially our brand or our character. And that's really great, because all of a sudden, you have that many more people seeing that thing, which they associate with you, it's bringing traffic, it's bringing attention, and making people uh, get really excited about things that we create. So, this is a, a, a brand example of some of the licensed products that we've made. Obviously, the Dummy from Kid Robot, people are familiar with, that's their sort of main wine box line. That was, uh, that's the Soothsayer design that I made for their 2009 series. We've made some miniature Ninja Town Micro Plush with Squiggles and Rotofuji. Uh, that's the MailChimp, that's our version of, of their mascot, Freddy. Uh, or, or we did that as a promotional item that they, they're sending out to some of the bigger clients and doing some fun giveaways with. Uh, the DS game, of course. The Zipper, Zipper Charm series, which we also do with Squiggles and Rotofuji. That just came out a couple months ago, and then the comic book with Double Two Publishing. So all of these things, you know, granted there is work involved, but we can spend a dime on side of that, and that's really uh, a pretty huge thing when these are made, being made in ten or fifteen thousand units. Uh, something we couldn't afford to do, and and uh, furthermore, we can get some of these products in to our warehouse to sell on our shop page. So it's definitely a, a great thing all around. But especially with the DS game and some of these other products that were like slightly more mainstream, some were definitely more rooted in designer toys, we had to start thinking about this. Um, and there's really not a clear answer yet. I think it will present itself as we grow. And it's not something I'm terribly worried about because there, there is going to be a point that if Sean almost is no longer